your boy Guru Guy 17 and I'm back with another video. Today we getting we getting into another video that might can you know help us on our everyday, you know, escapades of any kind or something like that. Like I told you in one of the other videos, I was like, I'm trying to find I just like to learn a lot of different things about all types of different stuff. I'm just uh you know, a glutton for knowledge. I ain't gonna just over try to compensate for it. Cause sometimes when you know certain things, you will forget the other things or you will jumble it up. So sometimes it's, it's a good thing to know a lot of stuff, but it's, sometimes it's not a good thing because, well, it's always a good thing, but it, sometimes it, it can have its, its cons because you're going to jumble it up with other information. That's basically what I'm saying. But I feel like it's, I, I don't care. I'm going to keep you doing it. <laughs> like, it, it is what it is. But today we watching a video by Better Chapter. It's called Robert Greene, How to Seduce Anyone with Psychology. Go see. So he so he he reads you yo, with that knowledge. Sapiosexual type stuff. If I'm not mistaken. I think that's the, the message that I'm getting from this. So but we finna see how this go. And if you got some gas or whatnot, by all means, spark up. Hold on. Let me get back situated. Last video I had smoked the last month off. <laughs> By this time, you should already have that bit situated. By the time I hit this bowl, you should have liked that video and subscribed. If you like the content that you so far have been getting, I've been consistent as well. Shoot, yesterday, I think I dropped eight videos. So if you click on my name, you're going to find a plethora of, of quality content, of reactions, daily vlogs i mean not daily vlogs day in the life vlogs eventually i'm gonna get into daily vlogs but that's a story for another day and for the videos but yeah by the time I'm finna hit this better like the video i plan with you sir oh man i plan with you like the video interested in your own thoughts and ideas and you're locked in your head it's like a, a record like in the old vinyl days going around and around and around the same grooves right you need to switch it around and you need to tell yourself the other person is more interesting than me mm. their life their thoughts their ideas it's like an undiscovered world it's like going to tahiti or something and visiting another culture mm. they have experiences you've never had they have a world that's not your world it's fascinating they're like a character in a movie. Mm -hmm. I want to understand it. If somebody did that to you suddenly in the office or in the realm of a male-female seduction, you would feel it. You would go, wow, that's rare. And you would be halfway seduced by just the attention. Okay, so the main thing is get them to talk about their childhood. Obviously, don't go, tell me about your father. Just get them to talk about their early life without just being to you know, too inquisitive, without making it clear that that's what you're doing. Everyone has this kind of emotional attachment to their experiences as a child, to where they grew up, to their parents, to their family, to their earliest friends. It's got all sorts of emotions surrounding it that are very potent yeah. and uncontrollable. So a very kind of slip in question about someone's childhood and then asking a few leading questions and letting them do the talking. So if you're at peppering them with questions, you look like a lawyer. If they do 70% of the talking, they're not even aware that they're doing that, but you're letting them talk, you're letting right. them be the star. But you find a, a foothold into their what excites them 
and you get them to talk and open up about their childhood and then occasionally a question and then occasionally you go into your own life mm. to sort of show oh yeah you had that I had something very kind of similar mirroring people mm -hmm. is a slightly manipulative trick but it's very powerful <laughs> They start telling you things about their childhood that are powerful. And you go, yeah, I had something very similar. And you probably have had something similar. Yeah. That's a really potent way of connecting to people. But you've got to be subtle. It's an art to getting people to talk and open up, to finding that thing that lights their face up, that gets them excited, you know? If you touch upon a subject and you see that they get nervous or they laugh a lot, they're very excited, just put that in your little index there and go and return to it. No, you've hit upon a chord, a subject that either excites them or it gives them like fear or whatever. There's something very powerful going on there, right? It, it's kind of like this, the ancient Greek play of Oedipus. Uh -huh. He killed his father and then he ended up marrying his mother. That's crazy. Yeah, and he never realizes it until he's like in his late 30s and, and he's gone through this, his whole career as king of this Thebes. And then suddenly he's made aware of it through various things that happen. It's like, oh my God, really? I've done all that? This is what my life is? And he's so overwhelmed that he cuts his eyes out and he blinds himself as proof of you know, how blind he was. Wow. So the Greeks are saying in that play that we're all kind of blind. Fate kind of pushes us around and we're not even aware of it. And the moment of feeling enlightened about becoming aware of some of these patterns in your childhood is actually a great moment. It's very painful. That's very powerful, you know. And in the course of a conversation, somebody says something a little bit disturbing or a little bit strong, and then they go, oh, never mind, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Forget about it, don't listen to what I just said. Well, obviously you're not going to forget about it. It's gonna sit in your mind and the seed has been planted. That's the kind of thing that insinuation is. It's never something direct. It can be in your body language, it can be in the fact that you appear in your words not to be interested in someone, but your look, your eyes say something different than what your words are saying. Your look is insinuating desire while your words are kind of neutral and blank. It's the art of planting seeds in a person's mind where they go home after they met you and they think, what did he say there? What did he mean? What was that gesture? If you get people to think about you when they go home, you're halfway towards a seduction because your spirit has entered their mind and now they're thinking about what you said, about what you did. And you know, um, we all have anti-seductive tendencies, talking too much, preaching, judging people, being sort of brutal with them, being in a hurry, not listening. If you can just eliminate these anti-seductive tendencies, you're gonna go a long way to improving your social interactions. How you felt about that video? I liked it, it was cool. I, I kinda already knew them cues and whatnot. And it was a cool video, that's all I was saying. Certain things though, it did. Yeah. I, kind of, I think I learned all that right there in uh, actually in sociology class in public speaking class also <clears throat> so that wasn't new information to me but it was kind of neat that it kind of brought me back to that phase in my life hmm. okay but like comment subscribe and comment how you felt about the video and did you learn anything from it comment it down below and I shouldn't have to tell you again to like that video. I, I think I already told you that at the beginning. I ain't that high. You better like that video. And you better subscribe. Boy. Girl got 17 now.